Jeff, we're here. Can you believe it? Season four wrap up. Season four wrap up. Jeff, we have we how many episodes are in Babylon five? One hundred and ten. This is episode for us. This is episode ninety two. Wow. Yeah. That's, and that's only because we've added season wrap ups. This we're, our next episode is episode eighty nine. Twenty two episodes left, my friend. How wild is that? I know that's so crazy. That's so crazy. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us here at Babylon five for the first time. If you've been around, you know exactly what we are. If you're brand new, welcome to the show. We took a pause this week because last week we finished season four. We'll do season five starting next week. This is our week where we just sort of remember what happened in season four. Kind of put a bow on that season as we say goodbye to that and round the corner on the final season of Babylon five. And what you guys are about to watch is Jeff and I over there recording a podcast and this is the behind the scenes so you get all that look because we don't edit this video you guys get it exactly as it comes. if you ever want to know what it's like to record a podcast this is it this is how it happens right here uh so you guys are going to do that hey while you're here please like subscribe share leave us a review leave a comment down below please keep it spoiler free we still haven't seen season five so don't spoil anything for us yet and uh jeff we we've got to get into this man we do for the this is Babylon 5 for the first time, but here for the last time, we're going to hear the season four intro. <gasps> oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, I've kind of liked this intro. I like this one. I, I, I think it's I not like my favorite. Better. I like season three better, but I've I've come to really like this intro. I like it quite a bit. In fact, maybe in our season five wrap up, that's a thing we do. We, we rank our intros. Yeah, and yeah. Intros in the themes, because I think yeah, there's a little bit of well, both Anything there. that has our kids at the end is going to win. It's going to win. Automatically. Yeah. You ready for this? Let's do it. You are valued and you are needed. You will be emperor. I think you're about to go where everyone has gone before. The year is 2024. The name of the podcast, Babylon 5. For, for the first, first time. time. Welcome to Babylon 5 for the first time, not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken, and I am the one who was. And I'm Brent Allen, and I am the one who will be. And we're watching Babylon 5 for the first time for you, the one who is. You know, Jeff and I are two veteran Star Trek podcasters who have been watching Babylon 5 for the first time, searching for those Star Trek-like messages that are being done in a uniquely babylon five way and normally this is where we talk about the rule of three and how this isn't a star trek podcast and how we're going to limit ourselves on our references but this brent is our season four wrap up episode all the rules are out the window we can do all the references or none of the references no rules i i uh i appreciate not having any rules although sometimes they give me comfort I was going to say, you tend to thrive in structure. I do. I do. It's, it's the lack of structure that makes things not happen. Yeah. The, the, the folks out there watching, Brent, whenever Brent watches those videos get like off the rails, it's because the normal flow of my week has gotten thrown off somehow, you know? But like, if I'm in the normal flow of my week, man, I, it's like clockwork. I got it. But if something happens, it's out. Part of our normal flow is in our wrap ups. We have really exciting and cool giveaways that we do so make sure this, is, this has become a tradition I, right it really this has full on tradition here like we can't not do a giveaway at this point now it, in fact it was about halfway through the season we actually planned ahead a little bit more on this one than we have in other ones i think it was last season it was like episode 20 and we're like oh crud we have what are we gonna do like it's coming no. up no no it wasn't that it was um because because last season we did the star furies our friend yes. with those Star Furies, he actually had, had had wanted us to do those back in season two. Yeah. And so those were those had kind of been sitting around, but we had had a different plan for season two at that episode 20 mark. We were like, okay, oh, we're gonna yeah. So it was it was it was a little bit uh a little bit then. We but it all ahead. sort of came came together, yeah. We planned ahead a little bit this time. Yeah. And uh, so we we're like, we got to do this really cool giveaway. It's not even a question anymore. It's just what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. So we know who our winner is. You've already been selected. Uh, what we did is anyone who subscribed to our Patreon as of, I don't know, what is today? As of Friday, um, 
you were in the thing and I ran you through a macro. And here later on in the show, we're going to let you know who won this, the Babylon 5 Encyclopedia, the complete hardcover set in one massive paper book. One massive paper back. I have messed that up so many times. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to be so happy to send this to the winner just so I never have to say massive paperback again. That is a that is a massive subtitle heading to the to the book. Jeff, you, you sure you just don't want to, you know, let the person have it right now? We could you, you can keep them on the string. We could do that. We could. Or we could just keep them on the line. Oh, yes. It's <laughs> exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> I feel a little mean being like, I already know who it is. Like, it's like I got it here, but, uh, but yeah, we'll let you know here in a little bit who did it. But, uh, but the thing to know, right, is when we do these giveaways, we, we look to our Patreon, we look to our reviews. These are the thing. Don't waste time. Like, you know, for the, we're starting season five. We've got 22, well, 23 more episodes of this and then doing things afterwards. So uh, we've got, just because we're coming up on the end of our first watch of Babylon 5 does not mean that we are done. Just phase one is coming to a close. Phase two is yeah we got movies way. we got autobiographies we've got babylon 5 for the second time we got stargate going on at the same we time got, over on the other uh, other places happening we got mass effect happening we've got uh gosh what else do we yeah we, yeah we got other stuff who knows who knows what other content we may have coming out here real soon exactly uh, so tons and tons of stuff happening uh now is a as good a time of any as as good of a time as any there that it works. is that works yeah um sorry my hillbilly came out there for a minute uh to uh to, to jump into patreon hey do you know what is also now as good a time as any what is that is to look back on something that we like to do every single episode jeff one of one of the hallmarks of this show one of the things that people love the most is when you and i make predictions they love it when we get it right they love it even more when we get it completely wrong and they get to laugh at us. Now we do a thing. If you guys have been around the show for a while, where we get to the end of an episode, we predict what the next week's episode is going to be. And then this is the spot where we look back at last week, trying to say what this week's uh, trying to see if we got it right. Well, we didn't have an episode for this week because it's kind of a break. It's a little, little bye week here for the wrap up, but we still get to play this game because all the way back in the season three wrap up, Jeff, we predicted what season four as a whole was going to be about. So why don't we look back on what you and I both said season four was supposed to be about or what we thought it was going to be about. Just check in to see how close we were. So I thought there were going to be three overarching stories and I was specific. You know, we've talked about this at the latter half of this season. I get too specific in my predictions sometimes. And uh, this was a case because I had an order that I thought things were going to happen in. So the first thing I thought that was going to happen was Babylon 5 aligning the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. I thought they were specifically going to align them under the banner of Babylon 5. Um, secondly, that was going to lead into the confrontation with Earth. They're going after Earth. And in that, Earth and the shadows, their alliance would be out in the open, apparent shadow vessels flying with destroyers, the whole thing. Um, and then after they defeated earth in whatever way, then we'd get the outright shadow war. And that would be the end of this season would be the shadow war, um, coming up or happening and ending. That literally sounds exactly the reverse order of how things went down in this season. Yeah. Almost, uh, almost beat for beat. And, and, and there was no open alliance. Well, I guess there was a little bit of it with those, uh, with those super Omega class or super destroyers that had the shadow bits Spines. on them. Yeah. It didn't seem to make a bit of difference whatsoever showed up in one battle and took out a white star yeah that's like you it. know what else didn't make a bit of difference whatsoever uh quite a Join. telepaths organic tech uh yeah we could go on epsilon three uh, yeah didn't you know yeah a couple things on there yeah at least so yeah not so bad what uh what did you think season three was gonna be about well, I said that because the, the, the title of the whole season was uh, No Surrender, No Retreat, right? Based off that great episode. I said that the Army of Light, that's another thing. We haven't really talked about the Army of Light. I'm glad we, we moved past that. that. Moniker. I'm glad we did, but embrace the cheese on some level. You know what I mean? Uh, the Army of Light, I said they were going to have to gain an upper hand, if not win the Shadow War outright. 
uh, because I really wasn't sure if they were going to wrap up the whole Shadow War. I will say I 100% thought that the, and I think I might have said this, the Shadow War was going to last for the entire season. It obviously did not at all. It wrapped up in six episodes. Um, But I, I think I said that either they were going to win the Shadow War or uh, after going on an arc over the course of the season where actually the shadows went up and kind of gained the upper hand that they would have to sort of rally, you know, no surrender, no retreat. They would have to rally. And by the end of the season, they would have ramped back up to having the upper hand. That that was my thought. If they didn't just straight out win the war. Mm-hmm. That um, that's, a, that's not really how it went down at all. Uh, no. Because it turns out I, I wasn't even thinking earth war, not for this season. It season five is when it actually made sense to me. Um, yeah. And honestly, the earth war never seemed separate from the shadow thing. Okay. Like it all seemed connected. I kept expecting everything, especially when remember that episode we saw Morden and the earth Senator and the Psy guy, like I, I, I kept expecting it all just to sort of the home guard and, earth and mars and the shadows and the vorlons and the telepaths and epsilon three and all these dangling threads that we keep hearing about and these dangling threads that we've been told so many times never get left they're just you know they always come back and i i just i kept expecting it all to merge into this masterful like continuum and uh they didn't that doesn't mean I, I don't want to be clear. That doesn't mean I don't like what we've got. It's just not what I was expecting to happen. Yeah, and that's okay. Well, you know, it occurs to me that at this moment we should go out of order a little bit on what we talked about doing. But uh, okay. you know, a thing that the community loves to remind us of all the time. What's that? Nothing's ever dropped or wasted in Babylon Five. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like basically in a sense we've seen the end of the series at this point. You know, I mean at, 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 yeah. for for a bunch of the, this season they thought they were they were done. Uh so this is going to be it. So I I thought it would be fun for us to go back and look at each of us kind of five maybe I don't want to say top 5 necessarily, but what are five dangling threads, story threads, things that brought up things we thought were going to be a big deal that uh-huh. just went nowhere and never really turned into anything or didn't matter in any way, um, even though everything matters in a way. But to add to that, of those five, which one do we have any level of confidence will get picked up in season five? I don't know if uh, you want to you wanna take first first go at it. Do you want to like alternate? Like go yeah. Back and forth, or you want to just do like the whole list at once? Let's alternate. and Because we're going to overlap, I'm sure. I'm like, oh, that was one of mine or whatever. But yeah, let's, let's go back and forth. Okay. Um, well, I'll start with one that I just mentioned a minute ago. Bureau 13 under San Diego. Right. They the, uh, control that whole thing. Like it, it came up with the Talia Winters thing like once. And then it's done absolutely nothing. Like nothing. Now, uh, the other thing is, so Jason Ironheart, right? Yeah. Um, he kind of ascends. Well, we saw in the, we saw in the finale, like humanity ascends. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Zero connective thread between those. Also, Lita. Lita has somehow been jacked up by the Vorlons, but there also seems to be a limit on how strong she is. So she's not there yet. So I yeah, that whole control bureau 13, these these assets that are out there and, and ready to go yeah. and like nothing. Nothing. We got yeah. Abel Horn, we got Talia Winters, and those were loosely connected at best. Yeah. Yeah. Now I do understand in the real world, something happened where like there is a comic book or something named Bureau 13. Okay. It it overcrossed. And so, so JMS was like, well, we can't use that name. It could have been renamed. It could have been reshuffled. But as far as I can tell, it's just been completely dropped. Yeah. No, no callback or anything. I think we had all those theories too. Like, was that person who was operating on Abel Horn? Was that uh, Talia's instructor? Like so many pieces that were we could have picked up. I, it on. was such a, it was such a dun 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 when the person that was watching over turned out to be this person that was in control. Like it was like, oh my gosh, it was supposed to be some big reveal. I just went to nothing. 
my mine's a little smaller and maybe a deeper cut, but uh, the Vendrizi in Exogenesis. Whole episode about these bug aliens, right? That like mm-hmm. stored knowledge going back forever and ever. They yeah. observed, they knew everything, they had all the answers. They probably would have been super, super valuable when you found yourself in a war with the first ones. But not even mentioned, not 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 brought up in any way. Yep. No nothing whatsoever. I'm gonna go way back to the beginning. Soul Hunter. That amazing episode of Soul Hunter. Oh yeah, it's really good. Like, like there was there was the Soul Hunter in season two, and like oh you've got our souls or whatever, and then we saw the thing in um, the episode where Delenn is dreaming, and we met Ducat. And we're like oh look, there's Soul Hunters over there. Oh no, somebody's about to die. We better stop. Like there was that, but yeah, yeah, anything. It's almost like they made that episode and then way up in season four, they're like, we should probably justify ever putting that on the airwaves. <laughs> People need yeah. to know this was a thing. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. If so, the techno mages, mm-hmm. yep. I understand that. Like, I love the techno. I really want to see the techno mages, but I understand they were leaving. Like we just caught them as they were passing out of town. Yeah. So the idea that we haven't come back to them makes a thousand percent sense. It's disappointing. But they serve their story purpose, right? We we hear you. We understand. They came in the geometry of shadows. They basically told us everything that was going to happen to Londo from that point forward is cool foreshadowing. At the time, it didn't mean anything to us. And then they left. They went to try and dr- go beyond the rim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. But it made sense. It makes sense, but still would have loved to see it. Soul Hunters are still out there. They're still being a thing. They're still doing a deal. So Soul Hunters. Do you think those will come up in season five? Um, if if they do it'll be a oh hey look at those guys but i don't think they'll be i don't think they'll be like a key crux of turning the events or something or they're gonna get into the war they're gonna get they're gonna we're gonna get a soul back you know delin's gonna get did did we actually get ducat soul back no they never got drucks they or drock yeah. they never got ducat's soul yeah that's like, what drove that murder soul been, hunter to be that something is Let's go after Ducats. Let's go get our souls back because that's a, well, I'll hang on to that one for a second. Go ahead. All right. I kind of just said it. The Drock. Yeah. Here they are. Yeah. And yeah, there's a war with them maybe in the future. This is my pick, by the way, for what will show up in season five. Sure. But I mean, nothing there. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned it a few minutes, a few minutes ago. Epsilon three. Yeah. The great machine. He, there was a point when draw said the resources of my planet are now at your disposal. And at one point uh Vonovo or someone said, Hey, do we want to use draw? And Sheridan said, no, I want to save that. And where are we? They did I, use the, they did use Epsilon three to blast out, um, Ivanova's uh, voice of resistance. Okay. Their, their, their transmitter. Great. They've got a whole, a cool battery. Awesome. Mm-hmm. But that, but that, but that's not the resources of my planet. And especially in a military fashion, you know, or a knowledge fashion, like, like this should keep coming back to the, like, it should be the, 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 what do you call it? The, like the repository of information that they go to anytime they need. Yeah. You they know. should have taken the Vendrizi and plugged them in there and taken all of that knowledge plus the knowledge they had and then have that be their their great yeah. library. Yeah. So I, I hope we see more drawl. I hope something happens. It also occurred to me, you know, they kept talking about getting the League to uh, stand guard over the station or whatnot. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Epsilon 3 could have just done it by itself. If anyone comes up on Babylon 5, they're in the bubble. It's taken care of. Yeah. You'd th- I mean, based on what we saw. I would think, yeah. I've got the the probe from a day in the strife. Oh yeah! Like what? Who sent that? What was the point of that? Yeah, is that a race out there that we're waiting to meet? I I really wonder if that wasn't a Drock thing because if I remember right, the probe came in what was very clearly an organic tech ship, 
It looked like so. a Vorlon ship, uh, but not a Vorlon ship, but it had that same sort of look to it, like to the outside, to the skin of it. Um, so maybe it's one of the shadows allies. Okay. That sent it. If not, because it doesn't, it didn't look like a shadow thing. Mm -mm. Like, I don't think it was, it was greenish. Shadow. It had like color, like the Vorlon yeah, ships did. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were, they were coming trying to look for people that were technologically advanced and then wipe them out. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a, uh, that's a preemptive strike. Mm -hmm. So th that would make sense to me that it was a shadow ally type situation. Right. Keeping things uh, nice and nice and low. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Speaking of that, I'll go back to another one. Is this number four, right? Yeah. Number four? Um, cause I have a list and I'm not, uh, infection. If I go back to infection, speaking of organic tech, the organic tech, they, they went down to this planet. They found this little thing, dude shoves it into his chest and he turns into this robot guy. Protect, 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 protect. And you're like, okay, well, this is some ancient thing. And turns out the Vorlons, you like, it's a thing that is just used. Yeah. Not this, this is a whole, uh, the organic tech came alive and destroyed the Vorlons or the shadows or no, it just, it's a thing. Like I, I expected yeah. more. I expected more. Honestly, it came up a lot. They, oh my gosh, they've got organic tech. Earth force comes in. We're taking that. That's organic tech. That's a big thing. And also people going that, after organic tech, but you can't because it's AI and it's going to eat you. Yeah. So. And it, it never really turned into anything. That's our first double up. I've got organic tech on here as well, where it's just like, yeah. great. So that's our next level of technology. And it really matters for nothing. Mm -hmm. We beat the shadows. We beat the Vorlons, not with battles, but with making a choice, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we didn't need organic tech for that. Um, Earth Force integrated some organic tech into their destroyers. We talked about that earlier. Meant nothing. White stars That's ripped it. right through them. Yeah. So I, I, did we already go back to that? Again, I, I mentioned a lot of this earlier. Bester, your wall is now my wall, Captain. And the whole like evil telepaths thing. Like that came up in the war against Earth. But it wasn't like, like this, I, I just... So correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff. Assume that those ships didn't get any shadow enhanced tech. Could those telepaths have still integrated themselves into the system? The, yeah, because they, integrate, they integrated themselves into non-shadow augmented destroyers. They're just regular Earth Force destroyers. Yeah. So the be it's not like having the shadow thing is what actually became what was going to be a strength became a vulnerability because now the telepaths could do something. Like it but they like they weren't used in the overall battle mm -mm. they weren't used anywhere like i just i i didn't understand yeah that it, i you know one when we come back with that so what's your last one i'm i'm going to say this and people are going to ream me for this meal. Like, oh, this is, we, we have talked about it before. Oh, Brent, they're already reaming us. Just yeah. go ahead. Just go okay. ahead. Uh, <laughs> you, I knew that going into this segment. That's you remember when, um, uh, Lanier sat down with everybody and said, Hey, our, our Mimbari souls are turning up over in the humans. Mm -hmm. And then we got the whole thing with Valen and then Delenn and here's that whole thing with the souls leaving and turning up in humans. And what does that mean for the humans? And what does that come back? That whole thing is as clear as mud. And and outside of a, it's happening, it's what stopped the Earth Mimbari War, does not seem to have affected anything to me. Now you can tell me that I'm completely wrong here, Jeff, but the whole Mimbari, like, it seemed like that was gonna be a thing, like a, like a, like, it, it just, it hasn't been like what you and I were talking one time about like, okay, are the earthling telepaths people who have the Membari soul? Yeah. Like yep. trying to figure out like what connection, what does it mean for somebody who has a Membari soul versus somebody who doesn't? And we later learned that, that most of the Membari are part human at some point anyway, because 
children of Valen or whatever. You a know? chunk of them, at least. Or a chunk of them, yeah. Maybe not most, but a chunk. Well, and, and I think that's the story that we that we got. And I and I think this is one that, like, I I think that the Minbari Civil War storyline was pretty. I mean, it was two episodes. You know, and and really, if you want to get technical, it was one episode because the first episode it was it was like, hey, they're there's sort of a civil war going on here, kind of. Yeah. And and then there was one episode with it. I think that got compressed. I think it was supposed to have more of an impact there because what happened was Sinclair going back and declaring himself Valen and turning into a Minbari set off kind of that intermingling of souls that then then happened human with Minbari and set and, and really set up what we talked about where Delenn really misstepped as a leader where she, when she was uncovered as a child of Valen, she should have stood up and said, no, people need to know this. This is a part of who we are. We have not been racially pure for a thousand years and we need to stop pretending that we are. Instead, mm -hmm. she just agreed to be a dowry, uh, you yeah. know, a, a battle prize. Yeah, I, but I, yeah, I, don't like I think, that. I think that those pieces played, they, they at a, at, they added context and flavor to the Minbari Civil War, but I think they were meant to, I think it was meant to do more. I mean, I, and, and that's what I mean. And that's why I mean, people are going to ring me out because, oh, no, this is all the places that came back. Go back to, remember the mystery of season one. Why did the Minbari stop? What is up with this hole in Sinclair's memory? And then Lanier sits down and says, I'm going to tell you something I should have told you a long time ago, and I'm going to explain it all. And he talks, and it seemed like, oh my God, this is this is going to be this is the thing, this is what's happening. And turns out it's just been like, oh no, we just found out why it's been happening. And wait, how have the Mimbari souls been turning up in Earthlings? Like, did they just like wisp over and warp over to Earth? Like, what what's going on with people on Earth that have Mimbari souls? Yeah, are they like? And it's only been for a thousand years, so this isn't for the entirety of Earth's human history. You're going back to at this point the Middle Ages. Yeah, it'd be the 1200s that they're going okay, back to. So almost the 1300s. Is there a particular people group that came around in the 1300s that have been a thing since then? No, not really. I okay, don't think so yeah, the 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 Freemasons, a secret organization. I don't know, like yeah. Illuminati, something. Illumi right? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Illuminati's got a triangle thing too. The Illuminati or Minbari. Oh, Plus, we just we just got. We're probably going to get kicked off YouTube now. And like now they're and, and and but they're spread out throughout the whole earth because it's not just like a clan. It's not a family. It's not a people group. It's just, you know, they're in it. It's like they're Club 65. It. Like if you're in it, you know what it is. If you're not, then you have no idea what the heck people are talking. Just about. threw out a wild thing that means nothing to anybody. Exactly. Exactly. But but it hasn't been that. That and that's what I mean. Like it, it's just this dangling story thread that I keep like expecting to be something and it just hasn't like they've, they've talked about, but it's never, they've never done anything. Well, like the organic tech thing. Yeah. It's been there. We've seen it. You just didn't do anything with it. It's like, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, well, look at that. Yeah. All right. You got one more, right? I do. And it's one we've talked about a whole lot, but I hold it near and dear to me. And it's, it's, you mentioned it earlier, Bester agreeing, you know, your war is my war. They had taken us on such a path where I was like, Bester is going to be a good guy. Yeah. Like he's going to be, you know, the, the anti-hero who comes across and we, uh, nope, nope, not at all. Literally one moment where they put a line in place that they probably, I, I don't know if they regretted putting that into place, but in epiphanies this season, they, in my mind, rewrote the character of Bester. They're like, let's, let's erase his last couple appearances, pretend that never happened. And, uh, and just go back to the old guy who wants to kill people. Well, I, I think I said it on this show. I am entirely on the train of Bester is Babylon 5's Gold Ducat. Mm -hmm. Yes. They have a guy who is clearly the villain, who becomes sympathetic, almost becomes a good guy, but then by the end is going to just show himself to actually be the worst villain out there. Like, he's not going to be the most powerful. He might even be the stupid villain. Like, right. Ducat was kind of the, like... He was his own undoing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it seems like that could turn out to be Bester to me. Like, I feel like he's on that same sort of path now. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think and, and, and I would feel better about that if he declared that your enemy is my enemy and then anything came from that. Anything. But the only thing that even remotely came from it is he used his influence with the shadows to abduct Garibaldi 
to then use him to take down the Babylon fight. At no point did he do anything to battle the shadows. Well, and and the only other time it came back up was when he showed up to Sheridan when Sheridan was doing the questioning thing. It was like, did you kill my girl? Because if you did, I'm going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you didn't? Okay, cool. Like, okay. Now, here's other threats completely unrelated to that then. So. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I was like, okay, sure, I guess. Well, I feel like we just we just spent a lot of time saying some pretty negative things about Babylon Five. That mm -hmm. negative, but I mean, please understand, we have seen four seasons of, the, of this whole thing. We don't know what's coming. We've been promised a lot, and at this point, this is we just talked about nine things between the two of us that uh -huh. tell us we're wrong, right? Like, I mean, because we're can I can I add something to that too, Jeff? Yeah, a a lot of us, I think, picking on this is because of something that we were told by the fans out there, people who know more than we do. I've be, we were assured how many times nothing is left dangling. Everything is for a purpose. Mm -hmm. It all comes back. Now, you and I have also watched the, the comments over the last, how long has it been now? Two and a half years, almost three years. Right. The show. And people are like, oh, well, maybe not everything comes back. And you're like, okay. So, yeah. uh, it, and like, like, cause I don't want JMS to listen to this one day and be like, yeah, I didn't say that that was all going to come back. I never said that it was all going to, that's something you guys picked up from out there. So, you know, am I, am I blaming all the listeners out there? Yes, I am. There you go. <laughs> there you go. In a loving, teasing big brother kind of way. Well, to, to just to take that a little bit, that's I, I, I don't want to say that that's what well it definitely influenced season two for us. I oh, yeah. you know, um wow, people, oh my gosh, you're finally through season one. Every I mean one person told me like you have eighty six episodes that are perfect from right. this point forward. And I even said I'm like, really really? Every single one? Like, come on. Right. And uh between that, things like this, and, and you're right, the people have been for the most part very gracious where they're just like, Okay, you're right. So maybe, maybe a little bit. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The the glasses of nostalgia are very strong. Yeah. And and we don't have those no. coming into this. So this is kind of where we are. Yeah. And and our you know, our job here is to document and and record the experiences of a first watch. Not the experiences of people who've gone through who just gush over the show. Yeah. And that includes the good, the bad, the ups, the downs, the question marks, the I don't get it. Like I think right now Jeff and I are just going, I don't get it so far. I don't get it. I, 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 these things I don't get. Like, and and the truth is, and you and I have watched enough TV, what we know is some of that stuff is going to be left unresolved by the end yep. of the show. Exactly. Yeah. And that's I mean, yeah, but it, it'll be fine. It'll be what it is and it'll it'll be great. But I think as we gush and we look and we analyze and we document, I'm curious, Brent, what your overall impressions of the season overall, just season four. Oh, oh. yeah. Uh, this was the thing that we were going to do earlier when we went yeah. out of order. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you see, this is what happens when my week, my, when my, my sense of stuff gets thrown off. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing now. Uh, season four. Here we go. Um, when I think of season four, I'm going to think of it in four parts, season four, four parts. Uh, the first is there's this first six episodes and all four, by the way, felt very like radically different to me. There's that first six episodes where we saw Cartagia and Lorian. And suddenly this felt like we were diving into Lord of the Rings, ripping off uh, ripping off Lord of the Rings. Right. Uh, it was also the end of the shadow war. The Vorlons turned evil which who saw that coming? Like, oh my gosh. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. It was amazing. It was uh, the the one episode that ended the shadow war, Jeff, I'm telling you, and Babylon fives had a couple of these, uh, like a handful. It was one of the best hours of television I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It was so beautifully done. And then there was this lull after that of like seven or eight episodes you know, and, and I, I understood looking back on it. Now I understood what was happening there. Uh, that was, those were the episodes where Garibaldi was going off half cocked and, but the episodes turned more, it, it turned back into this episodic thing. And it just sort of felt like we were meandering, like we were treading water. We weren't really doing anything. And it was just, 
it was this kind of just weird wishy-washy time but i also looking back understand that what they were doing there was it was kind of back to the world building of season one where if they those things were all setting up what the final run was to be and if we had jumped straight to the final run without having this that wouldn't have worked so we kind of had to have this like i get it i really do but it was it was a little bit of a slog to get through to to be quite honest and then we got that like last what was it jeff six seven episodes where we went to the earth war thing right and I, again it's fantastic wrapped i mean we you and i got to episode 21 and we're like we are so satisfied every like this mostly. is we, we, huh mostly mostly right but i mean seriously it was like we just we just got up from thanksgiving table like just stuff like oh this is so good let's just go sit on the couch and and uh you know maybe put on our jogging pants and fall asleep while we watch football like this just it felt good you know um it was really really good so that that was the third part and then the fourth part that one single final episode <laughs> which was like just sort of of dumping wastewater all over the warm squishy feeling we it's like you're sitting on the couch taking a nap and somebody comes over with the 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 juice from the turkey and throws it on you and you're like what the world uh i i, I yeah and also by the way it was a clip show with clips we've never seen so what what have we had so far i feel like we get one of these in in the last couple of seasons there's a clip show without being a clip show that everybody's like it's not a clip show and then we had uh we had we had a clip show that that was a clip show. I, don't, I don't remember what and then this one like a clip show of stuff has not even happened yet yeah <laughs> you know so uh, all of that um here's the thing i can't say that i hated any episode out of this whole season including that final one i can't say i hated it i was disappointed in a few but i didn't hate any and i think jeff this might be my favorite season of babylon 5 even more than season three i liked season three a lot Wow. I think I might like this one more just because of we got the conclusion of the Vorlon Shadows, we got the conclusion of the Earth, uh, of the Earth Civil War. We got the we got the the Mimbari Civil War. Like we got conclusions, we got things wrapped up. And I I tend to like when things do that. So I really like season four quite a bit. Um, I will tell you though, I'm very nervous for season five. Yeah. I'm very nervous for season five going in as far as will we like it or won't we like it? How about you, Jeff? What are your kind of overall impressions of season four? So I, I, I think that I was more excited for this coming into season four. I was more excited than I've been for any season so far. Um, and it started off amazing. Like it was so good. Uh, like we literally, like there were, there were nights we literally got done recording and like I shut down our recording and then I turned over and I set up my reaction video because I'm like, I'm going to watch this right now. Like I can't wait to to do this. There were surprises. Um, it was exciting. We had met new people like Cartagia and Lorien that were I what cool I Cartagia is a terrible person, but I loved him as a character. But we we talked about this a lot, and this is going to sound negative at first, I think, but it's not intended to be negative. This season was the payoff for things that had been seeded in previous seasons. So at a high level, we knew it was coming, right? I, I, I bet our hit to miss ratio was probably on our predictions was a lot higher this season than another ones, at least at a, at a high level. This season um, was very telegraphed, like from yeah. episode to episode. It was very, it's like, it can't be anything but this. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, oh, really, no, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's the effect of great writing, right? That we knew these things were coming. We connected some really disparate dots because the writing was good enough that you could see, see the pieces were there. Yeah, Jeff, was, if I may interject, because I remember you and I having this conversation this season of what it means as a writing, as this is just the brilliance of JMS's writing mm -hmm. where you set people's expectations to something you tell them what's getting ready to happen and then you do it like you actually pay it off and there's this tendency to want to subvert expectations and like it's going to blow people's minds and 
what I find honestly is when you do that, it actually just pisses people off. Yeah. You know, but here he set it up, told us where we were going, brought us along on the journey and then let it pay off. And it, and it just felt so good. It, yeah. it was so it's satisfying. It was entertaining. Like it was really good to me. The big, like, whoa, in this season was the Vorlons, like having them become the bad guys. I'm excited for our second watch through because what I want to know, and please don't, don't answer this if you're listening or watching, but what I want to know is if you go back and watch the previous three seasons, if you can see that, right? Like if that just was kind of seeded all along that actually they are, are just as ju juvenile and childish as the, as the shadows are about how they're dealing with things. But as much as the earth stuff played out the way it should have, and that we kind of knew it was, I, I'm not satisfied with the earth story that happened. I feel like there were big deal stories that were left on the table, defectors that weren't defectors, right? That was kind of hand brushed away with one little, okay, yeah, that happened. Clark's suicide still doesn't work for me. I, I, I needed more than him just randomly scribbling Dr. Strange love stuff onto a thing and then shooting himself with a PPG also to be the Mr. Pedantic guy. Why did he have a PPG when he was in earth dome in a building and not on a space station? Anyway, that's probably not important at all, but, uh, but I think that on balance, this was a great episode, a great series. Wow. On balance, this was a great season that I really enjoyed. It had super high points. It started off really, really hot. It got a lot hotter and then it cooled off and it didn't really pick up a, a lot to me. And then that last episode, uh, I, you said it best. I can't disagree. It's just very disappointing after everything that we saw. And it, and it hurt. It hurt the season for me overall. Um, I didn't hate it. Didn't hate any. There's not a single episode in here I hated. On balance, I, I, I think at this point I'm sticking with season three as my favorite right now, I think. Um, but I, I, I can't discount the whole cancellation stuff, you know, playing into here. And um, if this had to be the end, you know, if this had to be the end of this, the, the whole series, would I be upset? No. Would I be a little disappointed? Yeah. But I mean, that's most every series finale you're a little disappointed in. So um, this totally served the purpose it needed to. And I enjoyed it. I liked it. I just, I, I guess I wanted more from it. I completely understand. I get everything you're talking about. The thing with Clark, the PP, like all, like all of that. It just doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you. I, I think yeah. is where we're landing on this. Yeah. But we're both in agreement. We didn't hate any of it. None of it. It was, it was a good ride. This season, Jeff, more so than any other season, felt so fast. It did. Now, it has been... It, it, it has been an equal amount of time as every other season. Every season has been 22 episodes, but this season just really seemed to go by so fast. Well, I think we were talking even last week about how we couldn't believe we we're at the end of the season, but also like the shadow Vorlon stuff, the Cartagia stuff feels like it was years ago. Yeah. But when I was getting my notes ready for this conversation on the wrap up, I was like, that was like, it feels like it was a couple weeks ago. Like it's, it's yeah. all so recent, the whole Jakar storyline with uh, all very recent. It was so quick. It moved very quickly. And that's, that's a hallmark to great, great storytelling uh, period. Just really great writing and great storytelling. It, it just goes to show how much he packed in to one season. Yeah. You know, especially in the early seasons where things were very spread out and you're like, Oh my gosh, what are we doing? Uh, well, speaking of that though, Jeff, you know, this season had a lot of great moments. But some of the best really had to do with our characters. There were oh, these yeah. great character moments. So, Jeff, what are some of the biggest character moments? It doesn't have to be a specific number. Just what are some of your big character moments from season four? Sheridan. He died and he came back. I think him dying, coming back, and then being kind of remolded by Lorian, um, that set the whole season on where it was going to go. It was a huge character moment. It changed him in very big and apparent ways, but also in very subtle ways that if, uh, gosh, to go back to a really old conversation, um, Sinclair versus Sheridan sort of a thing. If this was the story met for Sinclair, I don't think this would have worked. Bruce, you needed a Bruce Boxleitner in this role to really get across everything that was happening. Yeah. That was big. 
Do you want to back and forth these or? Uh... No, just run through your list. Yeah. Uh, Jakar, Jakar refusing sole leadership of the Narns. I, I, I just, Oh, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. I couldn't help but think of the Jakar of old midnight on the firing line and stuff, him bloviating, you know, in the council chambers to then and quiet saying, no, I'm, I'm not going to take this. What, what a huge growth for him. Yeah. Uh, Veer killing Cartagia and then reveling in the death of Morden. I, hope that veer is in season five <laughs> and i'm excited to see what happens with his character because those two things are, cha are are changing him forever in fundamental ways i think that he wanted morton to die he told him to his face that he wanted to die and that he was gonna wave at him just like this but in the moment don't, don't forget don't forget joe veer is still centauri Right for, for as innocent as Veer has been for the conscience that Veer is, he is still Centauri, and for him to be in a spot where he's looking at somebody going, "I want to see your de you dead and your head up on a pike," is a hundred percent a part of that culture. Yeah, that's on brand, totally. Yeah, but then in the moment when it came, I think Veer of season two might have backed away and been like, "Oh, I don't know about that," but no, he he lo he's loving loving that mm -hmm. it's a lot of growth for him i thought we saw a ton of growth in ivanova and i gotta tell you i'm so, so furious at how the season ended for her because we so season one ivanova was peak she was so great and yeah. then in season two i started talking about how well you know, we're just she's got a different feel to her it's not quite the same in season three i straight out questioned some of her uh you know capabilities as a leader and whatever but here in season four like she is like it's a great growth as a character that whole four season arc for her she was taking yeah. charge she was she was great when she when she told sheridan to pack it up and take a day off and then she actually went and solved real problems for the station yeah. like that's 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 growth right there mm -hmm. it was incredible and i saved this one for last because i think the community will really appreciate it franklin that scene in Rising Star with Franklin and Ivanova. Mm -hmm. If this was pre-shadow dancing Franklin, he, he wouldn't have been able to pull that off with her. He would have told her how she was wrong, told her whatever. He would have found some way to flip it. Instead, he was a good listener. He was a caring confidant. And he, Brent, he was a good friend mm -hmm. in that moment. And that's not the Franklin that we watched for the better part of three, you know, almost you know, three and a half seasons. Mm -hmm. Franklin, I was so, I, I am, I'm a, I don't want to say I'm a fan of Franklin's. Like I'm not there. I still have a lot of, a lot of flaws, but I really, really liked Franklin in this season. And that moment in rising star with Ivanova was just, I think the cr a crowning moment for him. What were some uh, of the biggest so, character moments for you? Well, I want, I want to start with where you just ended. Uh, that scene with Franklin only I want to talk about Ivanova yeah um her coming back from the dead greet almost experiencing survivor's guilt with with uh, Marcus and everything that happened there um you know what she didn't need to be able to grieve that moment hmm. her rabbi to come from across the galaxy wow wow yeah Talk about growth for a character. Oh man, yes, you know I mean? yes. Um, she was able to to go through that. Uh, now I don't know if she would have sat Shiva for Marcus, if that's how that works. I, I, sorry, I'm not that up to date on that culture, but she was able to grieve, and she was able to grieve with somebody else when she turned and she hugged Franklin there at the end, and just she found comfort in a friend's arms. That and, and Franklin who in no way, shape, or form took advantage of her, did anything that, that we can <laughs> come to accuse him of. He, he, he had this light chuckle and laugh, almost where he was like crying with her, said, did you really just say boffed? <laughs> like to be able to lessen the tension and just be a good friend. But that moment for Ivanova of coming out, and I think that that's, that, that is a, a, fundamental shift for her and her character that moving forward unfortunately and i think we're in agreement what we witnessed was 
Claudia Christian leaving the show. Yeah, I think so. Not uh, that's her trap door was she went to go be a captain of another ship. If she were to go do that, like I could understand how could she go back to work on Babylon five after that? There's no way. How could she stay on Babylon five after that? And the emotional piece that I hope we see Claudia Christian again. Yeah. I, I hope I'm completely wrong. And she turns up in season five, episode one or episode two. I, I hope that I'm wrong. I don't think we are though. Um, or maybe she turns up in the movies. Maybe she turns up in crusade. Maybe she turns up. I don't know what somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's such a big deal too, especially her, like you said, taking comfort in a friend's arms because when she lost her dad, she refused to take time off. She refused yeah. to, even when, uh, when the rabbi talked to Sinclair and gave her time off, you know, she was just yeah. like, how dare you, how dare you do this? And to go from that moment to yeah. that, that, uh, that's, that's a great, that's a great call. It's yeah. good. Um, I think, uh, Delenn in the dreaming episode, stepping into what Ducat, uh, actually, I don't even think it was that it was, I think it was the next episode after that, but it was tied to the dreaming. Like when she came out, when she came out of the dreaming, no, 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 it was in that episode. And she went, I know what I was supposed to see. And she walked in there and there was the guy. I don't think we ever got his name. And she's like, no, no, here, take this drink and come with me. Come see it and come. And this is who we are. And this is what we are. And for, it changed in her what she was able to do. I think it redefined the whole. I don't think she would have been able to do that starlight thing that Naroon sacrificed himself in mm -hmm. where she just she stayed in that thing like a boss, like it was barely even touching her. And what was the other dude's name? Uh, Shakiri. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He walked into that thing like he was, you know, burning on fire. And she's right. just, I'm good. Uh, until until the very end. It's like, okay, yeah, this is actually hurting. Um, but I don't think she would have been able to do that had she not had that moment with the dreaming with Ducat and understood who she is. Yeah. And what she is. And, you know, we've had this conversation several times about this idea of understanding who you are. Not what you do, understanding your value. Delenn found her value in who she is, not in being Mimbari, not in any of that stuff. And it allowed her to move forward in a new way. And I, I just thought that was huge for her character. Yeah. Um, and I hope that she does not just become Ambassador Delenn and Mrs. Sheridan. And be the good wife. Like I, I really want Delenn to still have her own strength and her own stuff that she's going through. You know, on her own, independently. I think that's that's going to be the trap. Make her Mrs. Sheridan. That's an easy thing to fall yeah. into. Yeah. And yeah, that that'd be a and real waste. And here's the thing: it, it's it's not it's not a bad thing when two people get married. For the two of them to become Mr. and Mrs. and be more focused on their own marriage. Like they should be going through stuff together. That's part mm -hmm. of what it is to be married. But I think you're right. Like for the narrative's sake, like Delin's Delin is Delin and John is still John. Yeah. And they both have something different that John is going to be president. Delin's got we don't know what Dylan has right now. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, she's she's left Minbar in the hands of a new gray council. And so yeah. she's got whatever she's got. And does she go back to the gray council every once in a while and kind of walk through it like Ducat did? That'd right. Or does or she in Tilza? And now, you know, now with the uh, Interstellar Alliance, does she have real work to do with the um the Anla shock? I'm gonna start saying that go. instead of Rangers. Uh, does she have real work to do there? You may have to remind me what that means a few times. It means Rangers. Is what yeah, it means. I get it. I yeah, get it's just it. I get cooler it. Than, than the Ranger word. Uh, speaking of that whole thing, Naroon, the whole thing with Naroon and finally sacrifice, where he ultimately sacrificed himself, but he went through those processes, uh, was huge for a character that has had four or five episodes yeah. in the story arc. But speaking of a dangling thread, he comes in and bows the knee to Antilza. And then comes out and kind of acts like it didn't happen, but then it did. Like, I, I, there's a few connective dots I would have liked for them to actually put together that they didn't, but I'm, I'm going to put them together in my head. But still, yeah, I think that was huge. But the other one, um, I mean, Garibaldi resigning. 
it's huge. And and going through his whole deal, and and the revelation from Bester of, listen, that's all him. We just amped him up and pointed him in the right direction. But that stuff was him. That's still inside of him. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it changed fundamentally everything uh, that he had. Um, also, I, I don't think we can get away with it of Sheridan coming back to life and going through the whole process with Lorian. Like, yeah. he came, you know what? He came out of that with new hair. He did. He did. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, if that's what it takes, I'm I'm game. Like I'll give it a he, shot. He took he got some new hair. And I saw I saw a clip of an older episode where his hair was still just kind of there. Mm -hmm. You know, not like combed back or whatnot. Uh but but yeah, he he came in for that. And then his whole uh in the torture chamber and all I don't know how much that physically changed him you know maybe not physically there's no way i didn't psychologically change him right but did we but have we felt it in the episode since i don't know that we there were like two episodes so yeah and well two were episodes ready. then the finale yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not gonna count but, i mean yeah he's still there so uh but i loved you know sheridan going through this whole piece of setting up amnesty for his people you know um, so slick but and to me this is probably the biggest one of the whole season Jakar coming to Londo at the bar saying, I will sign your paper, but I won't sign it on the same side of the paper or I won't sign the same page or whatever. You know, uh, that was he, Jakar being able to take that step. And it really quickly snowballed into them sitting in a chair, having a drink with confetti on their head. Yeah. Like real quickly snowballed into that. But we still need to see how does that get to them wrapping their hands around each other's throat at the end like we've already seen there's a really good bookend though to the coming of shadows i mean yeah. that was that was two seasons two full that, seasons of a story that's a really. good point i hadn't thought about that as a bookend yeah yeah it's really well done yeah well jeff with with all of that you know some of these characters characters we've come to know and love they've got a special place in our heart they do we did lose two people this season we did and if we could get a little serious about it, uh, Marcus died and Ivanova, as we mentioned earlier, has apparently left the show. So can we just take a moment, Jeff, without it'd be kind of fun to sort of memorialize these two. Yeah. Like what did, like how, like what did you have in mind? Well, uh, if we could, if we could get solemn for just a moment, if you're familiar with the idea of a eulogy, I've yeah. prepared, I've prepared a statement. Okay. A little, a little eulogy. I feel like I should have like background music to this. <laughs> I, know, I, I, I might, For the audio, I might dig something up a little something. <laughs> we are here today to commemorate the leaving of our dearly beloved commander and now captain Susan Ivanova. I'm reminded today of when we first met Ivanova. She had not been the original XO that we were introduced to in the gathering. And I remember being sad about losing the previous XO, but also being intrigued by this new Ivanova. Here in the early mid nineties, the Soviet Union had just fell. The Berlin wall had just been torn down. And in this show set in the future, we get a strong, independent, vocal, spunky, intelligent Russian woman as our new XO. Her presence quickly made us forget what's her face from the gathering during her time with susan ivanova we shared much and we learned much we were witness to her father's passing and we were there with her when she was finally able to grieve we were witness to her memories of her mother we were there to see her kick people out of cnc and we were there to hear her tell stupid pilots i told you so and declare herself god just kidding god we saw her run everything from a gift shop to the station itself and we also saw her um, handle diplomatic situations with, say, creativity and grace. We saw her be right there and leading the resistance. We saw her turning Sheridan saying, let's make these jackets mean something again. And we saw her becoming the face and the voice of the resistance. We learned from her how to grieve, 
we learned how to risk love, how to share secrets, and perhaps most importantly, we learned that it's pronounced Ivanova and not Ivanova. So now we remember her as she leaves the station to take command of some ship we won't remember the name of, following her big trapdoor exit of the show. Who knows if we'll ever see her again or what she's up to these days, but whatever it is, she'll do it with elegance, style, and a full-on load of badassery to Susan Ivanova. That's beautiful. So now you just expect me to dust off a eulogy for Marcus? Yes, I do. Come up with it off the top of your head. All right, let me see what I can do. All right. Marcus Cole left us on Monday, November 4th, 2261. I think. I think I'm wrong, actually. I honestly think that he did it, though, because he's just as nervous as I am about what the fifth season of this series is going to look like. He was born on the Eurasian mining colony where he lost his brother, who was a ranger. Shortly after his death, Marcus also pledged himself to the Anla Shock and became a ranger himself. He came to Babylon 5 to get help for a ranger training facility on Zagros 7. He helped Sheridan get comfortable with the new White Star. He stood at Ivanova's side when she went toe-to-toe with the Tiki Party First Ones. He fought and almost died to uplift the Len as the Antilza, and he fought his way into our hearts. Marcus was friendly to many, but truly friend to few. One of the fortunate few was our friend, sitting right over there, Stephen Franklin. They went on many adventures, meeting bugs we never heard about again, arguing about breaking King Arthur's heart, and eventually coming together in the honeymoon suite at the Red Planet Hotel. But maybe his most important relationship was the one that never came to be, that reached its most full potential without a moment to enjoy it. That relationship was with Susan Ivanova. The moment that she tossed a bouquet of Corwin gifted roses at him, he had given her his heart. He spent the next year building a stronger connection with her, but never having the courage to put himself out there. That is, until he found that courage. Marcus Cole gave his life for his true love. In a truly selfless act that arguably put the entire Liberation Fleet and the independence of Earth, Mars, and the other Earth colonies at risk, And without any fanfare, he used advanced alien technology to extract his life force and give it to Ivanova. Marcus may have died as a pure virgin, but he absolutely got inside his one true love, and we will be eternally grateful. To Marcus Cole, we say, Nisak Schleck Slimwa, I am your friend in peace. You just came up with that off the top of your head. Yeah, I figured I'd just give it a shot. That's why I, mean, I got the date wrong, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I wasn't exact on a lot of things. But, it, uh, you know, you brought up something there that I hadn't thought about until this moment. Uh, Marcus, you know, told us he he was a full-on virgin going in. He was saving himself for the one true love. Mm-hmm. That kind of recolors of Ottawa sitting there going, the least I could have done was boffed him. Right? <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's that's right. <laughs> Literally is the least you could have done. Yes. <laughs> not to minimize that in any way whatsoever. It's a special moment and all that great stuff. But yeah, not going to argue with you there, Susan. All right, Jeff. Well, listen, I think we have come to the part of the show that everyone has been waiting for. The giveaway. Mm, not yet. Okay. 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 Well, Jeff, I think we've come to the it's part. It's coming of- soon, though. It's coming soon. Go. I think we've come to the part of the show where everyone has been waiting for. This is the part where we review the 100% objective, definitive, immutable ranking of all the episodes of season four. Now, we're going to do this like we did in season three because we thought that worked out really well, way better than season one. <laughs> or two. two. Or yeah, two. two. It took forever. 
Uh, we're going to do this white elephant style. So here's the deal. We're going to run through the episodes. We'll go from 22 all the way up to one of how we have them ranked right now. Each of us only gets three moves. When you move one, the other person can choose to leave it there or they can move it again. They can steal it. But once it has been moved a second time, there is no more movement. It is locked in. The only way it moves from there is if you put things above or below it, but you can't touch that episode. So, uh, Jeff, since this is the definitive immutable objective, 100% completely accurate, I don't expect there to be too many movements. We'll see on this one. Uh, but right now, why don't we take a look uh, as we go through this at our, uh, episodes and Jeff, do you, I should have actually asked this beforehand. Do you, can you do like a quick blurb about what each episode is? Just to I don't, I don't have it ready, but I, I could, if we need to, as we go in, can you like, can you pull up something that has just a blurb on it? Like whether it's the, the Babylon five fandom site or whether it is, uh, uh, IMDB or Wikipedia, just some, ju just a quick line to be like, this was the episode where X, Y, Z happened. And yeah, we should take a moment here in the show. Sorry, YouTube. Welcome to the behind the scenes thing. Uh, it just occurs to me we should uh, we should probably have it ready. Ha yeah, have that to be able to go because I don't necessarily remember what was exactly in each one of these, but I think we need to uh, uh, look at that. And I d I do have a. Uh... document ready for uh to show but let me okay here we do this and then i'll do okay so i can i can reference this here as necessary and then for my what am i no stop <laughs> there we go okay i'm gonna do this for my editing so i know when to bring it up in three two one and there it is okay so this is our current coming back in oh you have the oh i was literally getting ready to try to bring that into this into the thing got us <laughs> good job jeff hey thank you making right. sure okay uh, yeah now so this is, this is mostly for the benefit of you folks out there at youtube because the audio people wouldn't be able to see this at all um but here is our ranking as it sits uh all right you good you want to do the sorry let's do the intro again yeah uh three who do you want to come in or you want me to I'll, I'll pick it up okay three two and so up here i've got a listing of all 22 episodes for us if you're on youtube you can see this if you're on the audio you're not going to see it we'll try and lead you through it um as as best we can but if you go visit our youtube uh we've got a listing here i've got a really um, non-ceremonious word document up with, uh, our current ranking of all 22 episodes, um, to, Jeff, I'm going to read, Jeff, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just on a note, can you make these bigger? Oh yeah. It's, it'll, it'll make it easier to read for everybody, uh, myself included, but mostly the P like, I'm just looking at this as a thing and those are really tiny. It's really clear to me on my thing. So <laughs> I'm just thinking for people who are looking at this on their phone or something of that nature, you know. Uh, oh, you know what else I can do here? Uh, really sorry, YouTube, that you're having nope. to watch all this happen. YouTube's fine. We told you. We This is why we tell you at the beginning of everything. This is the behind the scenes. There we go. That's that's much better, Jeff. Much better. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Come back in. Okay. Two. Two. So what I have here is a list on our YouTube. You can see all 22 episodes in our current ranking. If you're on the audio, uh, we'll do our best to lead you through and I'll read uh, the ranking uh, here in a moment, but you can go to our YouTube and see this as well. As we make changes, we'll make them in real time. But starting at the bottom, uh, 22 episodes in 22nd place, we have Epiphanies, 21, The Deconstruction of Falling Stars, Racing Mars, Lines of Communication, Falling Toward Apotheosis, 17, The Illusion of Truth, Conflicts of Interest, The Hour of the Wolf, The Exercise of Vital Powers, The Summoning and Rounding Out the Bottom Half 
of the rankings, rumors, bargains, and lies. At number 11, we have moments of transition. And then our top 10, whatever happened to Mr. Garibaldi, the face of the enemy, between the darkness and the light, end game, atonement, and then our top five, the long night, no surrender, no retreat, intersections in real time, rising star, and into the fire. Brent, do you want to offer the first change? Well, we're going to look at epiphanies. Uh, epiphanies was the for as I'm looking at it, that was the first episode after the Vorlon Shadow War saga ended. Yes. Um. And I don't actually remember what happened in that one a lot, but I'm looking at my note, and my note immediately says it was a weird episode. Things were very disjointed, and it felt more like episode one of a new season. Lots of world building. Like I said earlier, I understand why they had to go to this, but coming right off of that end of the Shadow of Orlon thing, this was such a a, a jarring shift. Um, it. I'm going to leave it right where it is. Oh. I'm not moving it at all. Okay. Uh, you know, when I came into this ranking, Brent, I had no intention of moving any episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we have a, a, a good ranking and I feel like, uh, gosh, you, you, we said this for every rank. you put it in a bag, shake them up and outside of con- maybe the top five, like they're, they're, they're all great. I'm okay. going to leave it. Fair enough. So there we go. There's our definitive and objective ranking of season two. And I'm ending the screen share for my editing in three, two, one. And now I have to go and close a whole bunch of windows. So <laughs> it's, it's well, welcome. It. Welcome to the behind the scenes folks, right? Welcome to the behind the scenes. Okay. So we did the thing. We did the ranking. Okay. Let me know when you're ready, Jeff. Almost there. All right. All right, Jeff. Well, we have, we have done the ranking. The, the list is locked. It is fully immutable. It is a hundred percent correct and accurate. And, uh, even if in games in the top five, uh, which it, it belongs there. So Jeff, you know what time it is? It's time to do the giveaway. It is right after this next segment. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess with that segment, then Jeff, it is that time of the season. It's that time of the show where it's time to boil it all down and see if it has any of that star Trek quality to it. Are there any deep moral messages? Is it holding up a mirror to society? Is it giving us hope that we could be better in the future? And does it deliver that message in its own unique Babylon five way? So, uh, Jeff, you get to do this on the entire season as a whole of ranking this on a scale of zero to five Delta Furies to see how strong the message was and how Babylon five was it. I do, but because this is our wrap up, if you vehemently disagree, you don't only stump, but we can, we can push a little harder on the ranking. But, um, I would say that the themes in this one are pretty apparent, right? Power and purpose as well as community and diversity. These were the themes that led us really through all of this. We saw the explorations of power and the costs of that power in Jakar and Delenn, but uh, for the most part, but we also saw it in Sheridan uh, quite a bit in, in a very different way. The purpose and what you do with your power was explored through the shadows and the Vorlons, right? And how they um, lost sight of their purpose, essentially. Um, but we saw in the others as well, we saw the cost um, of the power and what you do with that power in Londo. Uh, we saw it in Delenn. We saw it in Narun. Um, we even saw it in, in, uh, in Shakiri as well. Everything culminated in the thing that was so important that multiple characters brought it up multiple times in multiple settings, and that is the power of humanity is in building diverse communities. These were strong themes. And I want to talk a little bit about how they were delivered in a Babylon 5 way, right? Jakar lost his eye to show us the the, the cost of, of power in doing things. He lost more than his eye, really. Delenn and Narun and Sheridan sacrificed themselves. Now, Delenn sacrificed herself but was pulled out. Sheridan sacrificed, sacrificed himself but was able to come back. Narun fully sacrificed himself. 
huge cost, huge questions in, on, on how we did these things. We saw the, the cost of power in Clark, right? And, and how it, it literally cost him everything. He, not only did he lose his life, but everything that he had visualized and saw for Earth was gone. The thing is, though, that the delivery of these themes wasn't necessarily smooth throughout the season. Uh, there were some hiccups. There was the lull. Um, I think if we looked at the season on balance, this probably had more five Delta, Delta Fury episodes than other seasons, but also had a lot of no Delta Fury you know, or Delta episodes compared to other seasons. And I think that a lot of the message were honestly, um, they were undercut in the season finale when we learned that also humanity destroys and leaves communities behind as much as we, we build them up. We learned that power does drive people to do terrible things. And those purposes can office, often be very selfish and come from places of scarcity. So I'm going to give this one three and a half Delta Furies. Jeff, I want to challenge you with something. Okay. So something I've been thinking about lately. Tell me what you think. We'll, we'll let's discuss this live on air. Yeah. Okay. The whole premise of the show. You and I are two veteran Star Trek podcasters looking for Star Trek like messages in Babylon five, four right. seasons. We've been doing that. And, and we have been on a bit of a journey as the show has been on a journey. And we started really looking for, for Star Trek messages that are within Babylon. How is Babylon five doing what Star Trek does? Right. Right. And then somewhere I think in about the middle of season two and we just did deltas, right? And then season two, we're like, yeah, but Babylon five kind of is its own thing. It's not really star Trek. And you know, how much are we enjoying the episode? So we added in star furies, mm -hmm. you know, and we kind of let that take us through season three. And, and really it was in season four. We said, you know what? Babylon five is telling its own messages, its own star Trek, like messages in its own way. And we, we smashed them together. We've been doing these Delta furies and that's, that's what you just did. You did the Delta fury thing. But I think we've seen something and you just mentioned it and you, you sort of danced around it. And I, I, I want to propose a change to the show okay. starting right now. We have no more Delta Furies. We're done with Delta Furies. Okay. Because while we are Star Trek podcasters who have been looking for Star Trek like messages uh, and seeing how Babylon five is, we've, we've come past that. The show has come past that. You and I have gone on this journey where, yeah, we got a, we also have Star Trek podcast, but we have a Babylon Five show. Yeah, we're Babylon Five podcasters, and and Babylon Five is not doing Star Trek messages; they're doing their own messages that have deep moral messages. Maybe, maybe not give us hope for a future. But certainly maybe, holds up a mirror. <laughs> it certainly holds up a mirror to society. Like, like Babylon 5 is doing its own thing, not even remotely related to Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. And so what do you say that for this final season, as we now we could we continue to look for these messages that's what we're just we're doing the thing we do with star trek which is we we look for messages we're looking for messages not star trek like messages anymore jeff just the messages what are the messages of babylon 5 that they're putting out and when we get to the end and we rate this we are still going to rate mm -hmm. we're going to rate uh let's see we can't we we're not going to use deltas anymore we can't use star furies because we've already used that how about this we're going to rate a new scale zero to five not even that we're going to rate a scale between white star for that's that's here's the message and here's how strong it is that babylon five put out all the way over to a black star okay where are you on the on the now you could go zero is black and five is white like if you want to do that whatever but we're, we're going to rate it on the scale of of how strong is this message because we we look for messages in shows right mm -hmm. how how strong is this message that babylon 5 is telling us not even thinking about the the not even doing that side the, right. the Star Trek thing just let's look for the messages what do you what do you think about that how does that how does that hit you 
I love the idea because I think we landed on Delta Furies because we kind of realized that at the end of season three, really, of just like, but I don't think we had the, um, I don't know if I want to say vocabulary is the right word. I just don't know if we had the words to express it. And yeah. and I think this season has, has really let us do that because the themes were, really season three and season four were so clear with their themes, you know, forgiveness and stuff. You know, I, 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 I will never forget just the the ring of passing through Gethsemane through all of the third season. You know, you know what I remember about that, like so clearly, was I remember leading up to passing through Gethsemane. A few people, you know, people still tell us like what they think about the episode coming up. Yeah, like yeah, this episode's kind of a one off. It's not really that important. And uh, and you and I kind of came to the end of the season and went, you know, passing through Gethsemane sort of was the tone. Like it set the tone for the season. That might have been it's the most important one. Season, right, right. Yeah, it was really well done. And, th and this one just had, you know, throughout it, just these themes that were just hammered on. And and they weren't subtle yeah. a lot. They, 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 I mean, yeah. especially, I, I think about, you know, I I've talked a couple times today about Jakar and, and turning down power. I mean, that was bonk, bonk over the head stuff, given his character and everything. But yeah. Um, but is so, so I think it makes a lot of sense. I think I, I wonder about the rating and how we, I mean, is it kind of a binary it's white or it's, it's, it's a white star or a black star, which means we're blowing it up in a, in, in a minefield of asteroids well, or it can be is it a, scale, a or, scale. It could be a gray scale. It. it could, we could stand between the, 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 the oh. candle and the sun there and we can, we are the gray. Listen, just, just keep it zero to five white stars. Right. How many white stars are we going to give this episode? I love that too, because it's like. I loved when we added star theories, you know, added a whole new dimension to everything. And this is really like the white star is an upgrade to the star theory. Yeah. So this is like an upgrade to how we're going to rate Jeff, all the episodes. When was the last time we saw star theories, like a star theory launch? Remember how awesome the star theory launch was? a long time since we saw it. Yeah. We've seen the star theories out. They engaged a lot of the battles with earth, but they were just, but they weren't wild. focus at all. Yeah. You know? So, and the star theories are so awesome, but man, that white stars up kick a ship man yeah big All right, so what so are we are we agreed are we making a change let's do it starting yeah. uh starting next week right and yeah. uh in that that'll be yeah. yeah wow all right all right well that's it for season four brent Bo on it tied nodded done done and now that we're at the end of season four i think it might be time to do the giveaway no you don't think so no you know what i might think it, you know i think it might be time to do what's that well, one of the I'll games part of the show. Uh -huh, yeah. part of the show. One of the games we love playing here is where we predict things. But Brett, this isn't just about an episode. This is about an entire season. Oh yeah. So we're gonna guess, and this is gonna be wild. I'm excited to hear what you think because I mean we have nothing to we have next to nothing to go off on on this, or we have a little bit. And I'm curious to see if we both grab that little tiny bit, run with it. But each of the seasons has kind of a title uh, with it, and that's kind of the theme of the season. Uh, season four was no surrender, no retreat. Season five is wheel of fire. So that's what we know. We know everything we've watched and observed in the last four seasons and the title of season five, Brent, what do you think is going to happen in the next season based on the title alone? What the heck is a wheel of fire? I know. I, I think about a ring of fire, right? Yeah. I mean, so a wheel of fire, it, it, it comes back around and, and it's all on fire and everything's happening. I, you know, we talked a lot about, um, the, the back half of season four being like the scourging of the Shire. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and I mean, for all intents and purposes, they wrapped up their, their storylines and then we're like getting this bonus season, you know? So like, this is like the, the Cimmerillion, I guess of, <laughs> of Lord of the Rings, right? Like it, it's some of the extra pieces. So I think this is going to wheel of fire. It feels like this is, I mean, I think Delenn telegraphed exactly what the season was going to be about in her, her over her uh, voiceover. There's the telepath war. There's the drock war. We've got to get to the drock war. You cannot just leave that. We know Londo is about to go be emperor. Mm -hmm. Um, he and Jakar still have some working out of their differences. And we know that they're going to like really come together at some point. Um, here's my question. And this is what I don't know. And I think we're going to, we'll find this out. How locked into the future are they? Mm. Cause this has been a thing since season one is been, uh, 
yeah, we see the future, but it's only a possible future. So we've seen Londo and Jakar dying at each other with their hands around each other's throat. We saw a reinterpretation of it with War Without End back in season three about why that happened. Is it possible we get to see the end of season four and Londo and Jakar make it out both alive without the thing on his neck? Oh, wow. And Londo having to be really pretend to be really mad at Sheridan and have Sheridan locked up in a dungeon cell and uh, you know, all this, all this weird stuff. Like like we we still have that. Hey, by the way, speaking of a dangling thread, you know something we've never come back to? So and and given how important it was and how much emphasis everybody put on it way back then, they haven't talked about it once. The Centauri eye thingy back from season one in signs importance. The artifact, right? That thing, yeah, yeah that uh that q2 brought in and 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 somebody stole it and then morden brought it back and that's what made them all happy and and this eye is a symbol of some oh they got eyes on their neck or I, whatever so so this this centauri eye thing i think has got to come back as well uh but i think i think this is where we're going is we're going to see the telepath and drock war it's just going to show us that that uh just because things were wrapped up in the main storylines that we've been following, that doesn't mean that everything's peachy keen for the rest of time. Okay. The wheel of fire always turns. There's always, and that's life, right? Like, Hey, you get through a big thing and ah, no, it's not. No, there's just, there's going to be more challenges, more things next. It's how life works. So, um, I, Bester, I'm also going to make the prediction of Bester is going to go full villain in this season who he will be the bad guy because he's always been a bad guy. What do you think, Jeff? Those are my overarching ideas. Yeah. Well, I think uh, to pull a phrase that some will get the wheel weaves as the wheel wills. Um, and it keeps on going. Uh, so I think, I think that, I think that a lot of what we are going to see was all, like you said, it was already kind of spelled out for us. We're going to see the interstellar Alliance be tested, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's going to be establishing itself. It's going to be tested. I, I think here I go being a little more specific than I probably should be, but I think that the first thing we'll see is the the kickoff and then into the telepath war. So that's going to be the first test of the uh, test. So that'll be the first test of the alliance. But as it's starting to resolve, either as it's starting to resolve or as it's starting to really ramp up, the drock are going to become a common concern and we're going to get a moment where a war ends because once again, we have to focus on a common enemy. So the drock are going to reunite and kind of give a reason for uh, the telepath war ending. That's going to help strengthen the interstellar Alliance. And then they're going to have to come together uh, towards the common goal. But I think the drock war is going to go not great. Um, for for everyone it'll end but it's going to take us close to the end of the season and in fact i think the season is going to specifically end i love that you brought up signs and portents i was smiling when you were talking about it because i have a call back to signs and portents in my prediction as well oh yeah and that is that babylon 5 will blow up it'll be destroyed uh we'll get that fulfillment of lady ladira's prophecy but it's not really going to matter because the we're going to have moved beyond the need for like that neutral space station. It's not going to be the value add that it was. The Interstellar Alliance will be bigger than just a station at that point, and and we will have moved beyond our need for it. And uh, the season will end with yeah, this, the 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 station is blown up, but we're going to progress, and we're gonna we're gonna be okay because the Interstellar Alliance is whole. And everything's going to be great until about 500 years from now when Earth uh, decides to blow itself up again. And now that we've talked about these, Brent, mm -hmm. we're watching an episode next week. Oh, this is a oh, I've always forget about this. This is a double prediction. Yeah. Okay. Now we're doing an episode. What's going to happen yep. in an episode, right? Okay. We got to start big and then we got to come down because we get back in the next week. We're back to usual. We got reaction videos coming out. We got all kinds of stuff getting yep. posted up to our Patreon, which we're going to talk about our Patreon here right after this because it's going to be time for our giveaway. For real this time. For reals right after this. So um, the next episode, we're going to watch season five, episode one. Season five, man. Wow. It's called No Compromises. Yep. Uh, we don't look ahead at these things. We just know the title. 
So Brent, predict for us, look into your crystal ball. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you think no compromises is going to be about. He's literally grabbing his crystal ball or he's dusting off his crown. One of the two here. So Jeff, I've had these, uh, uh, this collection of these, uh, action figures. Yeah. You dolls. know, I've, I've slowly been collecting them. Yes. Yes. Dolls. Um, it, it's not on the back of this particular box, but there, there is a character that a doll exists for like an action figure exists for that we have never met yet. We have yet to meet. Uh, I want to say the name is something like Lockley. That's the name they Never. dropped in Deconstruction of Falling Stars. Sheridan mentioned a Captain Lockley. Really? Mm -hmm. I missed that. Okay, so I think this, with Ivanova now gone, this has no nothing to do with the name. Uh, with Ivanova now gone, Sheridan is now promoted to the president of the Interstellar Alliance. Uh, Babylon 5 is still under Earth control and is still Earth's thing. I think Commander Lockley is our new commander on the station, and we're going to meet her. Okay. That's my guess. I, you know, a lot of people, oh, it's a spoiler. It's a spoiler. I've literally had zero context for who she is. I'm making a complete guess right now. I think it's a really educated guess. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm positive that's the name shared. It said it was when they were showing the start of the telepath war stuff, and Garibaldi was in the room, um, and Sheridan was on a screen saying, "We do not, we do not negotiate with terrorists." And he mentioned to Captain Lockley in that scene. Well, there you go. So I, I yeah, I think uh, this this is an episode that, like, it, it's the start of a new season. They didn't expect to have this season so they're gonna have to set up some things for us this will be a, a kind of a here's some new characters here's some new world building we've got to set you up for in order to move forward down the line londo's got to leave to go become emperor here soon uh, i don't know that that happens in this episode um the tele telepaths do do we start getting they, didn't they tell us in deconstruction falling stars that they allowed a group of telepaths to live on the station yeah some rogue telepaths so i mean uh, I don't know that that happens in this episode, but you know, he, I, you know what that reminds me of is brother Theo and his people talk about a, something that they just dropped. Yeah. Like, are they on the station? Did they leave? Did they go home? Did they, they're just not there. They never have never mentioned them again. As awesome as those guys are anyway. Um, so yeah, I think, I think this is all about, Oh, you remember when we got Sheridan, when he came in as a new thing, mm -hmm. The whole episode was about him. I think that's that's this episode only with this Commander Lockley, who I'm saying is the new commander of Babylon 5. Okay. That's my guess. Which, by the way, I would make that guess without being able to know that that's her. I would just say, we got to have a new commander of the station. <laughs> We're going to get to know that person. I, I'm i just drawing conclusions here. Yeah. You got a name to work with. Yeah. I and feel it's, like... It's reconfirmed by what you just said about from Deconstruction of All the Stars. I missed that name altogether. Yeah, I, I didn't connect it. Like I, I, I recognized the name. I didn't put it in my prediction, you know, prep or anything. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be locked. I didn't know exactly when the time frame was gonna work or whatever. But that name was like, oh, okay, yeah. Now, I think I think we're gonna get a very new Babylon Five. We're gonna have TNT money and TNT production values uh, coming oh, into yeah. this thing. Yeah, I the new captain, new XO. Um, and I think there's going to be a conflict just like when Sheridan came on board, right? The, uh, was it the Trigati came through, uh, you know, the jump gate. And so we had that conflict to kind of work with. I think it's going to be a telepath really, cause we're moving into the telepath war. So something telepath related is going to come on and that's going to give, uh, the new captain and XO a chance to kind of establish themselves a little bit. Yeah. But I think the no compromises piece is going to come with Sheridan. Uh, Sheridan has to establish himself as president he's got to put together his cabinet or his advisors or, or whatever and we're going to see more of this hardline sheridan that we came to see in dealing with earth uh and the shadows and in, in vorlons before like he's not going to compromise and there's going to be conflict between him and earth um not like conflict conflict but just um you know, negotiating things. You know, they're going to see things differently. I, I, I really see this being the beginning of something I think is going to come earlier in this season, but in future episodes of uh, negotiating for Babylon 5 to belong to the Interstellar Alliance and not to Earth Force. Mm. 
but we're going to find out right here next week. Hey, thank you everybody so much for joining us for this. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you're watching or listening. Leave us a rating, a review. Jeff, Jeff, stop, stop, stop what? the presses. Oh my gosh. I told you. Jeff, how could you? This whole time. How could you, man? How could you? We got time. a way to do, man. It's time. And I don't know how long I could. I mean, we've stretched this out almost two hours as it is. Uh, but here it is. The Babylon 5 Encyclopedia. All you had to do to enter to win this bad boy was be a patron. Mm -hmm. And so we went to our Patreon. I pulled a list of current subscribers. I plugged it into a spreadsheet. I hit, give me a random one. And so this is going to one of our Narn subscribers, Becky Sparks. Becky! <laughs> Becky Sparks, you are now the, I hope, proud owner of this Babylon 5 encyclopedia. I'm going to give it one more shot. The complete hardcover set in one mace. <laughs> It's going to be yours, Becky. I'm done saying it. It's going to be yours. Listen, just uh, we're on Patreon, right? So send us a message or you can email us at Babylon 5 first, the number five, the word first at gmail.com. We'll get your uh, shipping information. I'll get this. Uh, I'll get this in the mail to you. So congratulations, Becky. Good job, Becky. And thanks for being a supporter for us on Patreon and to everyone who has joined us on Patreon. You guys are awesome. You rock. We hope you guys are getting lots of value out of uh, your commitments over there and you guys are just enjoying all the extra exclusive content that we get for you guys out there. Totally means the world to us. So for real this time, until next time, thank you for joining us. Don't forget yeah. to subscribe. Brent, what? Yeah, hey, what's yeah, what's up? Uh, I spy with my little eye something that starts with B. And that's when I shot him, Your Honor. I mean, we're not some, some deep space franchise. This station is about something. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's where I was actually supposed to cut you off. It's perfect. Because you said until next time. And then you like, yeah, you went, I messed up. I, and messed then up. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> but I, th I think it works. It, it's a fun little, fun little run. So let's not delay this any longer. We're going to go ahead and get out of here, guys. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you all later. Yeah, for real. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so you much. Are amazing. You guys are amazing. We'll see you next season five starts right now. Let's go.